the Big third deal. most important signal to Google right now. Like it's an AI. It's a brain. Yeah. All right, it's time for another episode of Grow the Dream. Today, how to hack your way into the press by a social media guru. Good friend of mine. That's a weird twist. Also, rank brain. Who's it? Uh, it's an AI. It's Skynet. It's self-aware. Oh, That's boy. freaky. And then some practical stuff, you know, like uh, how to write really good headlines or email copy inspiration. Excellent. Coming up, tools of the week. All that and more coming up right now. Welcome to the most indispensable show for people doing the hard work of growing your business. It's the marketing podcast by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. Welcome to Grow the Dream. All right, welcome to episode 62. We're getting old. We're getting up there. <laughs> We're sexagenarians. I like to think of the podcast as maturing. Maturing. I like that. Oh, you know what? You would have a word. You that bet I would. <laughs> more nicely describes that. <laughs> he's the aging process. He's a wordsmith, yes. and he's also a boomer. <laughs> so let's. What, what do you guys think of the brew? I, I, this is a surprise. What are you? What are you getting? Notes of um, raspberries, pineapple. Um, I didn't get any any fruity notes, but um, it's it's actually it's it's good. I like it. I like it. What do you think uh, its origin is? Um, I'm going with Africa. Going to South America. Um, it's Colombian city roast. Whoa, you were right. Yeah. So, boom. So from boom. City roast, uh, I guess, is in between medium and dark. That's right. Yep. City roast is a little beyond. It's not a light roast. That is. I think it's more medium. Then. I thought it was between medium and dark. Is what I. Uh, well, you could be right, and I haven't looked. But in a the while. reviewer on Amazon also could be confused. Oh, it was an Amazon reviewer that you were trying. At least it wasn't a yeah. YouTube comic because those are the worst. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I almost assiduously avoid those. Man, we're getting good words today. We are <laughs> assiduously. Did uh, so? Who's the brand on this? Oh, oh, shoot! I just closed the program. Um, Coffee Bean Direct Coffee Roasters. They're my oh. kind of like go-to for a big. Bags of coffee. Oh, for the on big Amazon. bags. Yeah. The big bags. The ones you yeah. don't use quickly enough yeah. for them to be fresh. I understand. I've been trying to go for a, a chocolatey coffee bean. Um, <laughs> All right. It's good. <laughs> so, hey. Yeah. Uh, yes. You guys heard of this Panama thing? The Panama Papers? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yo, just a little gosh, bit. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm <laughs> The hashtag, you can just, all you have to say is Panama. Oh, okay. get, I know it's called Panama Papers. Okay, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes, I've heard of it. What are you thinking of it? <laughs> I, oh, I thought you were going to bring something up. Iceland's uh, PM finally resigned. I don't know. He, you know, he looked oh, like I've he was I've been waiting for that for years. I know, yeah. He's so corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Was it did a guy you guys, or a gal? No. Did you guys, so, so that story hit on Sunday of, of last week. Yeah. And I but it's was. But like the waves have been like. Stuff keeps coming. Oh, it's going to keep coming for a yeah, while. Yeah. Um, I saw this footage that they had published uh, of the of the PM when he was being interviewed, the Iceland PM in March, mid March. That's when the story started to break in P in Iceland. I was going to say in PM, but that doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> it, so, but anyway, they the this journalist, this guy, this poor guy. I mean, he did some stuff that was inappropriate. So I don't mean to defend him, but. He got led down the garden path right to the moment where the reporter who was interviewing said, oh, by the way, is this your company? <laughs> oh. Oh, man. And he'd been answering questions and, you know, handling all these trans government transparency questions. They were, get, they were just they were turning the heat up on him a little bit. And he finally, yep. at one point, he said, you know, I'm starting to get a little uncomfortable with these questions. And then, and then they sprung it. And, he, and, they, and they caught it all on camera. And he got mad. He started taking the microphone off and stood up. And, you know, walked. I wasn't. This is not what we talked about. You know, and uh, it was. It was. It was. Funny. And, and oh. that's a telling sentence right there. Oh yeah. 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 So busted. He yeah. didn't want to talk about it. Well, right. Exactly. But the, because what that did was that peeled back the veil a little bit. That sentence that shows that yes, a lot of these interviews and with presidential candidates all over the place. These are all scripted ahead of time. Oh, of course. They, they won't are. agree to it unless there are certain parameters that are put on it. You can only ask me about this or only ask me about that. Yeah. But then readers and and watchers and listeners think that oh, here's, this is some serious journalism going on. Yeah. It's hard got, hitting. Right. Yeah. They have got you know Donald Trump or they've got the PM of Iceland or whatever, and they're they're interviewing him. It's like I no, thought we all. were going to go an episode without saying his name. Sorry. Oh wow, we did, didn't we? Well, um, I I think that's fascinating. You know what what fascinates me more than anything about the Panama Papers 
is that 350 or maybe 400 journalists, I've seen both numbers, have written kept this it? quiet for a year oh, <laughs> while yeah. they've been working with the data. How is that even? How does that even happen? Yeah. Right. But it also is explan- uh, an explanation for why they didn't clue in some American papers and media outlets that were not um, tipped off because they don't trust. Right. Them to I mean, be you know, quiet. the Guardian and the BBC were both in on it, but I don't think any American publications were were actually working on it. I was looking at the map and I was surprised to see how few um, dots were in the U.S. Yeah, I think that the U.S may factor more largely into this after some more time because they were they were kind of starting eastward and working their way west although gotcha. that Iceland doesn't sort of work with that but anyway <laughs> um, but they they're, I, that was my sense you know like Putin and some of the eastern stuff was bigger at first okay. but I also don't think that the Americans used this law firm I think the Americans may have some other law firms because uh, it was all sort of centered around Mossack Fonseca yes that one, one firm okay anyway interesting yeah fascinating uh, what else is in the news what else happened that uh, I missed? Uh, you know, let's see. We have a news story here, Rod, that you stuck in about uh, Twitter conversion tracking. Uh, that's kind of an interesting one. I did Twitter conversion tracking? You did. Check me out. Twitter simplifies conversion tracking and audience segment segmentation. Did you just with put a, it in there just because it said Twitter on it? Yeah, no. I put that, you know, seriously, I did put that in there last week. I don't want to totally out us here. Um, <laughs> but I did put that in there last week. Did you week. know the monthly yep. active people who... Are on Twitter is the same monthly active number of people that listen to podcasts. I roughly saw that. 21 yeah. percent. I read. Okay, this is ridiculous. More from users a on Twitter, journalist, but, but that that the listenership, podcast listenership, went up 23 percent. Yeah, yeah. In, from 2015 to 2016. 23 percent in one year, and what everybody sort yeah. of thought was a fairly mature or maturing industry. How do you get that kind of growth? Well, that's oh my god, that is pretty significant. We all read Jay Bear's story, I guess, on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, that's right. It was Jay Bear. It was Jay Bear. I uh, posted it. Convincing Convert. credit here. You posted it. You know what? I got it from Jay. I, I didn't know you posted it. You posted it, posted it, it, and then I posted it several other places, and then gave myself credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Josh. That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well, at least you, hey, you admitted it. I just said it on the podcast first, so I'm taking all the credit here. <laughs> That's fun stuff. <laughs> I have no okay. idea where I got we, it. we can move on. But you know, <laughs> okay we started this podcast before that twenty three percent explosion in growth. He also recommended that podcasters stop calling themselves podcasts because it's such a niche. He wanted to say on demand radio. I was thinking more like radio show, just like T V shows we now know are things we can get online, Hulu, Netflix. I think we could just call it radio but show. But I think radio falls apart too, because we're we do we have video. Look at that. There's a video camera in the room and mm-hmm. we're shooting this. So I it's like I, I like the on demand. I think podcasting is fine. I, I think it's, the fact no. that none of us has a pod, ODR has an iPod anymore. I think, I think doesn't matter. That's it's ODR. still on it's still an video. established medium. I don't. Uh, I don't know. It's a show. I, I don't know. Everybody knows what a podcast. It's a show. Is. Podcast can be video, whereas radio still is radio. It's We're a show, guys. Right. We are. We okay. Are. Well, speaking of shows, uh, let's take a break. But before we do that, we have something fun coming up that we're going to be talking about. Yeah. Yeah. What are we talking about? We're going to be talking about how to hack your way into the press. Ooh. This is going to be good. We got Sujan Patel. It's going to explain how it goes. Well, he's not actually here, but we're going to talk about it. He's going to explain it still. It's just digital. (laughs) Okay. All right. So, um, Rod. Yes. What book are you listening to right now? Oh, this is embarrassing. Oh, yeah? You're not listening to a book right now? I'm reading Old Fashioned. Oh, what are you reading? I'm reading a book called, uh, I can't get the name of it now, from 1957. I told you about it already once. Ooh. This old book from uh, South Africa that ooh. I'm reading. Oh, yeah, you did tell me about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's out, it was saved out of a library by a friend of mine out of South Africa. Man, I and, love uh, that. Yeah, I, love I know. That. I can't remember the, 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 the used bookstore finds. Yeah, and it yes. smells like a used book. And, uh, and, this, and, and you're listening to it on Audible? No, and, he's reading no, it. No, I'm reading it. I said that's so why I was a bad one to go to on it because I'm actually reading a book in old-fashioned Okay, way. that's wonderful. Let's move on. <laughs> well, I what are you I am reading, to, David. <laughs> you, you, yours is is from 1957. Yes, I think mine might be from a little bit before that. Oh I, yeah, I don't remember. Was it what published it? in the 40s? Are you talking about what I think? I'm you're talking, talking about, about Mr. Orwell. 1984 by wow. George Orwell. Yes. What a perfect moment to be listening to 1984. You're making me want to listen to that again. You got to. I I uh, listened to it for the first time. I read it. Yeah, I read it many before. years ago, yes. and I had forgotten huge chunks of it. So this week, the girls had a girls' night out. And I'm at home, and so I'm, I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? Because I don't actually enjoy watching television all that much. Um, and so TV is off. 
I put in an audible yeah. and an, and I start playing Minecraft. And so now the Minecraft world that I was in playing the other night has like I have markers in that world mentally where oh at that point I was listening to this part of 1984. <laughs> uh, and at that yeah, point yeah. over there yep. he's having coffee with the guy exactly. and, you know what I mean? Like it's it's funny how that works. It's a little bit like when you're when you're jogging or you're running, right. I don't jog or run, but uh, or riding a bike. And you or I drive. drive, you drive right, yes. and then you and then you, but you're listening to something at the time, and yep. you pass that one spot, and, and it go, always comes back to you. Isn't that funny how yep. that works? So now when I'm in that Minecraft world, I'm thinking about Big Brother. Uh huh. <laughs> great oh, book. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. It's yeah. a great book, and it's actually really timely. Okay. If, okay. So you've never actually said what the book's about. Oh, 1984. Yes. Ooh, you don't know. No. And and I suggest okay, probably some of our listeners don't know. Yeah. Also. Okay. So. Ah, where to begin? So, okay, so if have you ever heard the phrase Orwellian? No. Yeah, probably. <laughs> How about dystopian future? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so at the time this was written, it was in the future because 1984 was you know several decades away right. uh, when oh. George Orwell wrote the book. He was predicting a future where it, there were the the major crime that you, there were no laws in this land. By the way, okay, the only crime that you could be convicted of was thought crime. Thought crimes. How about and, that? And there are thought police whose job it is to monitor you. What's so great so is... this was science fiction? Like a pioneer of science fiction? Maybe a little less on like science. more prophecy science Yeah, no, not so much science, but yeah, fiction. Prophecy fiction. Hey, Prophe- there's yeah, a whole new it, category. It was very prophetic. <laughs> if you listen to the book now, it's scary how oh oh my my gosh. bizarre... I mean, the phrase Big Brother... Big you Brother know? is watching. Yep, Big yeah, Big Brother is watching. You've heard that? That, from that, that comes that's from that George book. Orwell. Yeah, George wow. Orwell's 1984. This show is so educational for me. Ah, fun. So if you have not listened to 1984, or, or maybe you just need another good book to read, or you weren't even born in 1984. Oh my gosh! Like didn't Josh, even think of that. You know, <laughs> when I first heard of the book, 1984 was still coming up. You know, yeah, uh, it was looming. Like, will it be yeah. right? It was. It's kind of like oh, those, I remember all the stories because I had gotten, yeah. I had my first newspaper job in 1984, and I remember oh. all the stories talking. So about it. I, I was go, in fourth grade in 1984. I can listen to it free. <laughs> you can get a free copy of 1984 or any other book of your choice from the hundreds of thousands of titles. Eighty thousand, over eighty thousand. Is it? I thought it was more than that. No, no, I might be wrong. Over eighty thousand. So it's over eighty thousand titles apparently. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of them, more than you're going to listen to this year. And uh, you can get one for free by going to audibletrial.com slash dream. That's audibletrial.com slash dream and get the free audiobook of your choice. And if you decide that a membership is good for you, great. If uh, and, and if that happens, you'll be supporting Grow the Dream Show. But even if not, you get to keep that audiobook forever. Sweet. Yeah. Good stuff. So, uh, Rod, when we had Sujin on the show, he gave us a fantastic plan of attack for getting yourself published in major publications like Forbes and Inc. Magazine and Entrepreneur and places like that where he's gotten. Yeah, he alluded to it. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, he's sorry. I mean, you can listen to that episode and no, you can yeah, go, he okay, some specifics this is how I could get myself published. But, but today we're actually not talking about getting your own stuff published as much as getting news coverage. Right. Right? Right. And this, is, this fascinates me how much he's on this because uh, for any of our listeners that might have missed the episode, which we will refer to and link to, um, that we had Sujan as a, as a guest, and Sujan is the um, co-founder of Narrow, which is an app that is used to grow your Twitter following. So he's really focused on social media um, and, the, uh, and the advances in using that. But what he's talking about here in a blog post uh, called How to Hack Your Way into the Press, he's actually talking in many ways old line mainstream media, and he's even talking, he uses phrase like front page of the Washington Post or the New York Times. I mean, this is as old school as it gets. Is there a front page? <laughs> like, I haven't uh, physically seen a Washington Post. Yeah. I have seen the New York Times because it's in Starbucks. But you know what? They'll do the, exactly. They'll do the equivalent online, even of a front page. For those right. It's 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 sort of highly heavily featured. Mm-hmm. All right. So, what's the strategy that he lays out here to get this kind well, of news coverage? Well, he's got he's got a few. I mean, he looks at building your brand and storytelling storytelling abilities and that sort of thing, and and how you tell a great story. Um, but what he he helps going through this. He helps you identify, you know, some of the things that you need to do to find what would be newsworthy and interesting to these types of media outlets. Okay, and, spill uh, beans. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I'm, I'm not going to spill all the beans because um, I think you need to read it. For one thing, all right. For one thing, he does this, and I, this is I'm just going to say this is fascinating to me because while he's explaining this and going through this, he's doing it totally in the new fashion. I mean, his blog post is full of um, uh, infographics and uh, videos 
uh, you know, uh, planted in them. He's breaking up the He's text. breaking up totally the way that the Washington Post and the New York Times do not. Do right, it. yeah, this is very un-newspaper-like. So, so he's yeah. reaching out to people who are familiar with this type of communication okay, and in order to help them see how they can leverage over into another one. And, and what he's saying hmm. right at the top, and this is a really important part, he says that this is an, a, a cost-effective strategy. And Interesting. Always, he says, chasing coverage should always be part of your marketing plan. And I think that's something, you know, on, on my end of the stick here, that's something that too often we lose. We forget we want to do everything through social media and uh, and uh, you know email um, blasts and that sort of thing. When actually getting that th- sort of third party coverage there of your uh, of your product or of your service is immensely important. I will say that I tend to think about PR and press coverage as a little bit less of a priority. And right. I and I and I think it's interesting that here's this guy. Who is like the king of digital marketing, right. and he's saying it should always be part of your plan. Yeah, that's kind of interesting to me. No, um, it is, and clearly he's had success from it because when he was on the show, part of what he did was he walked us through sort of some of those specifics, as we were saying, and he's had success getting himself in those sorts sorts of mediums. But what he's saying here is get your company, get your yeah. service, your product, you know, covered in these, or maybe yourself covered in these, where you're not writing like a guest column or something right. for them or a guest blog but you're actually being covered by them. I mean, that's extremely valuable, and it, and it gives a great deal of veracity then to your company, to your product, for anybody that's coming across you as featured in the Washington Post. I mean, that would be pretty and, you good. Know, and he uses that. I mean, he's got the logos of every major you publication under the sun in his own um, on his own websites everywhere you look. He's using these. So what his first point is uh, to um, build your brand and storytelling abilities, like you said, then he's got find a unique and genuinely interesting story. Now, isn't that the problem though? Like he, he he's he's saying you know some lucky brands can can gain coverage just by hiring someone. And his example is when Apple hires uh, last year they hired the uh, ex Fiat Chrysler executive, right. and it sort of became oh oh Apple's thinking cars. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and it was like, okay, that's a news story just because it's Apple and they hired someone. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, eh. Apple is kind of not the best example because all they have to do is hiccup and they're going to get all sorts right. of coverage. I, I hired an email marketer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I, really, who not, wants to cover that? Nobody. <laughs> nobody. Yeah. Are you going to be doing exactly. some email marketing? Oh, my we goodness. already do. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> yeah. Actually, I need an email marketer. So if you're listening and you uh, have some email marketing skills and you want some kind of moonlighting part time thing. Oh. Uh, on a contract basis. Well, and you'll like this. My uh, tip to tease the one of the tools of the week is uh, an email marketing tool. Ah, so. Fun. Okay. So uh, so we, if you can't hire somebody amazing like an ex-Fiat uh, Chrysler executive, uh, what, what else can you do? Like, I, One of his questions is, are any of your products or services related to a current event? Right. So that that's the tie-in that I talk about where you need to be able to, if you can tie something into news that's happening. Or, or a trend that's going on. And it can be a trend that's national trend, a product trend, mm-hmm. a cultural trend, or a geographic trend. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, 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 yeah. uh, you know, Atlanta's, um, you know, steakhouses are just booming right now and everything. And your company is... Uh, vegan. Yeah, <laughs> your company's <laughs> vegan. You sure. buck the trend. You know what? You could do that. Yeah, right. You totally. could be the opposite. You yeah. know? So you look for those trends, and they can be at a number of levels. It doesn't have to be some macro trend. It can certainly be a micro one geographically. Or... In, uh, segment industry segmented. Yeah. You know. So I I followed some of your tips this week. Okay. Okay. So I actually asked you about this uh, at the end of our PR episode a few episodes ago when we uh-huh. talked about PR, but I did it in sort of a couched you know hypothetical way. And uh, so one of our clients did you get free advice? I on did. Me? I did. It totally got free <laughs> advice out of you on air even, and and you gave it to our listeners too. That I was did. good. And I'm just here to testify. I'm gonna testify right now. All right. To the <laughs> you testify the veracity of your uh, of your advice. So uh, three you- three doc uh, no actually four doc practice uh, here in town podiatrists. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them was elected president of the Minnesota. Podiatric Medical Association. Absolutely. There's a news peg right there. Totally. Totally. So the hook. So I wrote the story up. You know, we got an, we had a nice picture of her. We wrote the story. She's the first female president of the organization, you know. Right. But a lot uh, of people don't second news hook. Exactly. Now a lot of people don't know that podiatrists, the foot doctors, treat a lot of uh, foot disease. <laughs> Actually, no, everybody knows that. They treat a lot of people with diabetes. 
Because if you're uh, diabetic, one of the things you have is nerve conduction problems yep. that creates problems in your feet. Sometimes diabetics have foot injuries and don't know it mm. because the nerve conduction is poor. And there are other problems. There's lots of other things. Well, World Health Day was last Thursday. Okay. The, what is it, was 7th of April. And World Health Day was dedicated this year to diabetes. Oh. So... News peg number three. Yep. Right. That's because because right. now yep you have sort now, of an event sort of thing. Exactly. If you need a doctor, if you need if you're a, if you need to talk to a physician about diabetes for a story you might be working on for World Health Day. Right. So I emailed a handful of uh, of um, media contacts in the area, and we got uh, one national bit of coverage in their industry, and we got uh, an, an email in one of the daily locals. Nice. Excellent. Well Thank done. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you for that. It totally works. Yeah. And it's valuable. You know, and old. obviously you know how to, to to maximize that then for your client. The client loves it. Yep. Oh. oh my okay. gosh! You cannot make people more happy than seeing coverage of them. Yeah, you know, it's than true. They, them seeing coverage of their of their company or of themselves. I mean, oh, people yeah. are thrilled with that. And my and the managing partner of that practice yeah. listens to our show. So hi there, Doctor Lasde. Nice. We <laughs> we, uh, we hope you're enjoying the uh, news coverage that your partner got. This well week. played. Isn't that and great? You just gave him more news coverage on the <laughs> podcast. Well, I think it is newsworthy because we're, look, I'm just following. Now, what I really should have done yeah. if I were following my business coach's advice is just simply said, "Hey, well, Rod, you have a business coach. I do. So I need you him. to. I need you to handle this. You know what? And I know your business coach, and I think there should be a penalty for that. I think you're right. <laughs> I think there really should be. So, Don't worry, I got my butt handed to me at lunch the other day. Okay, well, that's yeah. good. I like the uh, what he brings out about uh, the media loving stats, statistics. Oh, yeah. Oh, they do love stats. And they do. I always see, like, you know, from some brand I don't know, but sounds like a big shot brand, collected this much data, and yep. this is what it says, and... Yep. But he's saying that you can do your own surveys. Sometimes you have to, if you need to boost your numbers to get up to that like magical thousand mark, you can you know pay to get survey respondents. But he was just using you know saying like using your email subscribers, you know sharing things on social, um, what with some sort of reward for taking the survey is kind of the way to do it. Um, but instead of just asking, hey, you know, do you like our product, and uh, would you use our product again? Use a survey that you can leverage to get uh, to get press about some sort of topic in your industry. I thought that was cool. No, it is cool. I mean, where you can do it yourself, you can also find, uh, you know, frankly, some basic googling, and you can find oftentimes studies and data that are related to your 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 media release, what you want to release, what you want coverage on, and when you include that in there, that gives a little more context, a little more meat. It makes it a little bit stronger of a pitch. But, but if it's data that's already out there and you Google it, that means yeah, somebody else not, wrote about it right. already. So is the so, press going to want to cover? Like they're you not going to want to cover that. What I'm saying is that is angle. included in it. So you're yeah. talking about the podiatrist. Da, da, in there, in that, somewhere in there about her being made the first female, you know, and Which, it's during yeah. podiatry week or whatever or month, um, in there. X number of people are suffering from such and such podiatrist association says, you know, right. And then you have more leverage and power and meat in that press release and actually makes it even easier okay. than for the media. So professionals. it's not your lead. Like it's not no. a part of the title. Because, not at all. That's why I say it's just fleshing it out down the road there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. So, okay. So it just establish, establishes more credibility. So yeah. It's not cool. the lead. Sure. No, not, not at all. Story. Okay. I now, understand now. One of the other things he says is to make your own story. Right. So, um, he has this <laughs> idea of doing something incredibly absurd. This and, is this is one of the areas where I part company with him a little. All right, so <laughs> yeah, the, the ice creamists are his example, right? There's this no such thing as bad PR. Now defunct London ice cream shop might be a clue as to whether this is a good idea or not. Uh -huh. But they were a uh, they were an ice cream shop that turned heads and got people talking when they revealed that they would be the first ever company to sell ice cream made from. Wait for it, pig's feet. No. Real. Breast milk. <laughs> <laughs> they ran afoul of health regulations. Though. I would think so. Yeah. I mean, you know, how do you? Of course they did. And now they're out of business. And that goes to my whole point. He he does recommend PR stunts. He even uses that phrase in his wrap up. Um, you know, where he says, "Make your own story." Um, I just think PR stunts are far more risky. Uh, you know, if you do a risk reward ratio, way too risky for the potential reward. As and this even shows it right here. Yeah, but aside from the fact that they got shut down three hours <laughs> later, <laughs> three uh, hours, they oh, got later. thousands of column inches. Right. Again, an old school term and endless discussions over social media. 
Oh, right. well, and but they their can company always, failed. But they can, you know, forward that domain to their new enterprise, and it'll have good uh, SEO value from the start. So, and they're still you know, getting press out of it, yeah. apparently. So I, I don't think that that's a business model. So, but if you had a, v- a valid business that, that wasn't going to be injured example. by the stunt, you know, right? He could have come up with a better example. Right. But, right. but exactly. the idea of making your own story, that's kind of cool. Sorry. You know, I have seen this done well. Speaking of Trump, years ago. No. <laughs> that was just for Josh, wasn't it? I did. I just did it just for Josh. <laughs> Back when The Apprentice was running. Yeah. Uh, and it was a, like in one of the early seasons. I forget the guy's name that won the first season. But um, he was for hire. Like you could, you could, if you were doing an event for your business, you could hire this guy. And you could leverage Trump's name because he was the winner of The Apprentice, Trump's TV show. Okay. And you pay the guy like, I don't know, it was cheap. It was like 1500 bucks or $1,000 or something. And the guy would show up at your event for two hours, right? And it's a lot of money per hour when you think about it. But when you think about the fact that you can use Donald Trump's name. Yep. Now, of course, this was before he was a political candidate. This is 10, 15 years ago. I forget, I forget how long ago it was. But that's an easy thing to do. It's, yeah. it's amazing how inexpensive some celebrities are oh yeah that's true and if they show up at your event or they're going to show up at your event right eh, isn't that a peg uh, certainly it is i would think so yeah okay I, I just have to say this on on the uh the topic of press um there's this guy that wrapped uh his resume at a job fair i saw that and got tons of press and then he even had a, had a hashtag going it was like get pat a job or something right that's anyway. great right. it reminds me of the bake sale uh, was it Dan's Bake Sale? Dan's Bake Sale. Dan's Bake Sale. That wow, goes back away. That really does. All right. All right. Well, that's fun. So we have prepared a free download crafted by the PR expert himself, who I've already said this man's advice works. <laughs> right? Right. So we have this free, we have a free download for them and um, in which uh, we sort of walk through uh, what you need to create a killer press release. Really. Yeah. And we're going to tell you about that in just a minute. But... Coming up next on Grow the Dream Show is a very, very fun story devoted to Rank Brain. Ooh, Rank Brain. Who's that guy? Rank Brain. What does he do? Judgment Day is coming. Holy crap. That's so dramatic. Coming up next. Here we are in studio. Rod, what are you working on? Public relations. If you're not getting media coverage for your business, you're missing a huge marketing avenue. The most basic and traditional form of public relations is the press release. It's effective. It's really effective. In fact, even the most successful digital and social media experts use public relations and press releases because it works. And we have an expert who's going to help you understand how to do it better. And I can tell you, I've used his advice. It works. He's the expert. Right. Make more money. For our listeners, we've created a product that will help you start creating effective press releases right away. There are four major components to doing this. There's the hook in which you have a hook or a news peg for your press release. There's the story in which dullness kills. You got to write it well. And then there's two more that you have to know to make it work. Go get your copy of this free report just for listeners of Grow the Dream Show. You can get it at gtdshow.com slash PR. That's right. gtdshow.com slash PR. Do it. Do it now. All right, it's Grow the Dream Show, episode 62. Fun show so far, guys. Mm-hmm. I'm enjoying this. Um, you know, uh, Larry Kim was on the show, what, I don't know, last year, some time ago. It's a while uh, back now. But it he was, was a while ago. It was he, great, though. He was one of those episodes. Oh, man, he's he's such a blast on Twitter, too. Um, but yeah, very much, very much worth hearing if you haven't heard Larry Kim. <laughs> you know, I have this little voice in my head now because of him. Every time I go to tweet... It's like, you should put three emojis. Three emojis. Three emojis. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, okay, I got to come up with three emojis for this tweet. I end up using the same ones over and over again. It's like, you know, hands lifted, fire, and then fist sometimes bump? I do the, oh. no, I'm trying to. I I'm a like, fist bump I feel guy. Like I like fist, fist bump. bumps is like bros. We're like bros. Yeah, but if you do and it to you know, chicks, they dig it. I'm kidding. It's it's, it's chicks uh, dig it. It was a joke. I guys. was that thinking was that joke. the chicks would not dig it because it's a bro like, move. Yeah. yeah, that's that's just specifically why I do it, because I'm like totally a bro. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what what? Yeah, co- right. What color is your fist? Uh, well, in <laughs> Slack you can change the skin tone. That's true, but on uh, Twitter you can't, un- unless I'm mistaken. I oh, I haven't yeah, seen that's Slack. It. Slack allows so you know. to assign a skin tone to your emoji. And I, a lot of different ones. Well, it's I, true. All of iOS does. All of iOS does? Yeah, there, it's it's within. If you hold oh. down. Uh, didn't know. Sorry. The, def- def- the default Twitter uh, keyboard. I'm yeah. sorry, emoji keyboard. Yeah. On iOS, if you hold it down on anything skin colored, 
it like brings up five options. That probably is one of those uh, emoji that we don't get on Android. So when you send it to us, it's just a box, a rectangle with an X through it's it. So weird, right? Yeah. So we don't get those. No. And, and sometimes I sometimes I see it. It's like the color in like this box, and then the actual fist bump or whatever. It's, it's weird. funny. I don't know. Speaking of Slack, did you see their advertising on television? No. No way. Last night. During, I don't know, we were watching... I'd have to watch TV to know that, right. wouldn't I? We were watching the History Channel, and uh, I saw the Slack ad run two different times. Okay, what, what was it? Animals. I'm super curious. It's what animals collaborating. Oh, oh no, cute. I saw this. I think I saw it on the internet. Oh, I saw it on <laughs> no, TV. I want to go find it. Yeah, you should check it out. Uh, I haven't been to the landing page yet, so I'll, I'll have to go look at, and see what that is. All right, so, but Larry Kim, speaking of, uh, of, of Larry Kim, now oh, we're yeah. back to Larry emoji. Kim. Apparently, we like Larry Kim because he gets us on tangents. Yeah, well, yeah. no, but this is this is good, and I mm -hmm. think this is something that you guys particularly, maybe Josh even particularly, will have real <laughs> interest in for SEO strategies. Yeah, it's it's well, yeah, he's talking about ways to to um, survive Rank Brain. Okay. Um, Rank Brain, we talked about on the show it's a Google's, number of episodes ago. We actually just talked about it last episode too. It's, oh, I'm, we mentioned we it. Yeah, that's mentioned. true. It's yeah. the AI. I feel it like is. we need to do rank brain. Yeah, we need like a rank brain day. sounder. We need like uh, a like a yeah. thing, like an audio. We'll thing. have like a thing. Yeah, we should. Uh, so uh, mm. he he he's <laughs> he's saying that there were a couple of other um, attempts at algorithm changes, which I think is kind of funny because there have been more than that. But uh, <laughs> he's talking about Panda, and in this particular post, though, what's fun about this is that it's very much a Terminator themed post. So that's the reason <laughs> for the Judgment Day thing. And he's got he found like a panda that is a balloon. I don't know what it is. So the, he's all the, about me. It looks like a Terminator the, the Terminator panda. bear? Yeah, and then there's the Penguinator because there was a penguin algorithm change. I'll beak back. <laughs> you got to love this stuff. Uh, so there's the Penguinator. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this new machine <laughs> learning component is actually changing the way that Google ranks websites. And according to Google, when it's in use, it is the third most important signal contributing to the result of a given search query. So third most important signal makes it a very, 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 very big deal. Okay, very so big third deal. most important signal to Google right now is being is something they built a AI. Like it's an AI. It's a brain. Yeah. It's uh Okay, so how does that work? It's for Skynet. People? How do people do this? <laughs> it's it's self-aware. How, how how does the marketer take a, take uh, advantage of it? Well, I, I think that's too easy. Like, let's go into it first. Let's go into Rank Brain. L I help me understand. Like, let's. Take it apart for a sec before I we. I thought easy was good, but sure, we can make it complicated uh, no, let's, first. Okay, I, I'm 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 not tracking. What should we do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost. Uh, so rank brain, it's an it's an AI. It's analyzing page relevance. That's essentially what it's all about. Okay, but it's their machine learning component that makes it significant. So it's looking at the relevance, and it's analyzing relevance on a one to ten score, basically. Okay, okay so but Google already does that. So what's different about Rank Brain? Well, what's this AI feature? In relevance it? scoring is kind of new. Um, there was a quality score built into AdWords that this is sort of related to. So in other words, when you run an okay, ad so in AdWords. What, I'm sorry. Yeah. What are we saying when we say relevant? It's, it's, exactly. It's similar. Okay, so this, this is, is what like, Rank Brain is kind of introducing So this is like world. quality score type of thing uh, that you get in yeah. Facebook and AdWords. It, well, except that it, it's it's different from the way that we think of quality score because because let's keep in mind with Panda and Penguin uh, and I forget which one it was that was most focused on quality. And these are search updates that occur. Okay, remember Panda. When Panda came along uh, several years ago, 2010, uh -huh. Panda came along. This is um, Terminator Panda or that's just new? Terminator Panda is just his okay. joke for this post. But uh, when Panda was introduced, it, it started to hit quality. In other words, the quality of the content. So there was always, there's always been some evaluation of whether you're using keywords, for example. Like, right. you know, relevance used to be determined primarily by the presence of keywords. Okay. When Panda came along, Google said, wait a minute, there are a lot of those keywords crammed into this post, but it's stuffed. It's keyword stuffed. And that's crap content, so we're going we're gonna to delist that content. Or we're going right. to devalue it. Which that is, was what Panda which was. was. Good. Yeah, okay. that was good. Well, it was right. good for for the web overall. Right. If you were an SEO company that did crap keyword stuffing, yeah. it put you out of business. Yeah. Well, it was a it was a lousy model you had anyway. It was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. So anyway, uh, so so let's differentiate between quality and how Google evaluates the quality of content 
from relevance. Okay, so now so now the third element then third point here you're making is relevance. Relevance is what rank brain is all about. But in a, in a bizarre twist of semantic, you know, difficulty, <laughs> it's derived from their old AdWords, AdWords quality, quality score, score, which quality score was the terminology that they gave to the component in AdWords that decided whether your ad that you were trying to run, right, was relevant to the landing page content. Okay. Right? Sure. So it, how related were the two? How related were the two? If they were strongly correlated with each other, then your quality score in AdWords was higher and it was an ad metric. Okay. So if if your and your cost page, was lower. If you were searching right. for uh, bananas Foster, bananas Foster Boston in, in Boston, right? So if the landing page was actually titled bananas Foster Boston as opposed to just bananas Foster, right. That would be higher relevance. Or bananas Foster or that New York a, City. Okay. You know, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that so would have a higher quality score. Higher quality score, meaning they're more closely correlated, and Google's quality score would then lower the cost of your ads. I don't okay. see how this is different from traditional SEO, but go on. Okay. So well, because. They uh, had uh, some technology that made quality score evaluation take place. That has evolved into rank brain. Rank brain. I like that. What they're trying to do is to apply that same idea to organic search. So if you did an organic search, you, Josh, ran a search for Bananas Foster because you were going to Boston. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, Bananas Foster in Boston. Bana <laughs> then you. <laughs> Then Rank Brain will go out and and use some AI sort of technology and find you the most relevant result based on the quality of. The That's content. not what I know. Relevant based on what? Relevant based on the the keywords because I know it's not as simple as that. But yeah, right. Keep but going. so so I, I'm just a schmo right. and I get on Google. Does it take into and account? It take, and well, just a sec. And and I'm and I'm typing in. I'm just a schmo. I'm, I'm typing in a search. I thought that Google would already find, like, say, um, content that was close to that search, but didn't necessarily contain those keywords. So it was relevant to what I was searching for. True, but keep in mind, Google's entire algorithm, going back to 1998, was based on PageRank, right. which was less about what was on the page and more about what links pointed to the page. Right, yeah. and that because that that ranked it as far as right. you know how highly it came up. Rank Google. brain though, like the AdWords quality score, doesn't require any links to the content. It evaluates the content based on the content all by itself. Okay. Now it is still not the number one right. yeah, thing. Go ahead. So what's relevant? Is it based on the I'm, I'm, I'm hung up on the word here, but is it based I'm, on I'm their it's in, got a, a meaning, intent a instead of the keyword? Like, is that the that's is, where I was intent kind of where is I was a big piece of this? Because you might say bananas Foster Boston, but if your store that hosts that landing page, that website, is located in Los Angeles, but you happen to be called Boston's Boston Banana Restaurant, Foster in you know, Boston Restaurant, and uh, you have a Bananas Foster page on your website uh -huh. that uses Bananas Foster Boston, but you're in Los Angeles. That's not relevant to somebody who's looking for Bananas Foster in Boston, mm -hmm. right? Right. So it's uh, you know we're getting to the heart of like why is search so freaking hard to do, and why has Google been so good at it all over the years? Right. You know, right. Part of it has been because they've relied on external signals like links. What 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 Rank Brain does is it applies some superhuman, you know, uh, AI to figuring out relevance based on just the, the content itself, and it's and it's we don't understand. Right, so, it's a so, black box. All right, so I'm thinking. Oh yeah, I want I wanted to try out this restaurant here in Boston. It was Banana something Banana Restaurant Boston. Right. Does Rank Brain help me get to what I want to get to better? In theory, because I'm figuring if this can be understood from the consumer angle, then then it will make it a lot easier for marketers to attack it. Yeah, but it, it so in theory, yes, except that currently Google's only applying rank brain to like complex long tail search queries. Oh. So <laughs> which which I've I've that's where I've seen issues. Right. Where they they're giving me irrelevant yeah. results. Like they're taking part of my phrase, and I mentioned this last week, and then they omit that like keyword that I was trying to use. To I distinctly surface a different piece of content, right? But it wants to keep giving me and, but all it the will, old. But content. it will still give you what you're looking for without taking out one of those words below that. And and I've been wondering what that is about. I don't know. Well, what's the takeaway from this? Well, the takeaway is there are some really important things that you need to um, need to look at. So one of them is uh, he's he's identified four sort of factors that you can look at. So 
click through rate is one of them. So in okay. other words, you need how good to, is your headline? Yeah, exactly. You need to make sure that people are clicking on your search results, not just finding them. And and that's that's click through rate. So that's a that's a, a component of it. Um, the number two factor that he uh, talks about is optimizing your SEO headlines and descriptions in order to get the click through rate. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's again focus on click through rate, but it's how to get there. Number three in this story is optimize for task completion. In other words. When people land on the page, do they take the action your call that's action. in your call to action or not? So the so, behavior. So Google's able to measure that behavior because they have Google Analytics and also. Well, yeah, but they also have other ways to to measure it without requiring okay. anal- analytics. Got it. And number four is use social ads and display remarketing as ways to help increase your search volume and click through rate. So in other words, you're kind of trying to game the system by driving people to search in a way that's going to okay. lead them to so your stuff. So specifically remarketing on Google so that Google can see that traffic. Yeah, he's definitely saying that, but he's also talking about using Facebook and Twitter ads. Okay. I'm not yeah. sure how that factors uh, into their search results unless Google Analytics is involved because if Facebook sends them straight to it, how does Google know? Important takeaway. Chrome. This is not the mm-hmm. number one. No, no, they can they can analyze a lot of different ways. For example, if you run a Google search for Bananas Foster Boston, mm-hmm. just a quick example, Great example. If you go to the number one result and Google finds you back on Google you click the five seconds button. later, yeah. clicking on the next result, that tells them something about the number one result. Exactly. So that's that factored make, in. Then. That, that makes sense. That doesn't require analytics, though. In other right. words, they don't have to have any JavaScript running on your I website. I know, but I still don't out. understand how they know when Facebook sends traffic to a page other than Google Analytics or if they're a person's using Chrome. Oh, right. They're saying drive the stuff to... Search, <laughs> what? Yeah, you're he's, saying he's, what? Yeah, he's 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 so copy the URL of the search. No, he's saying no, no, no. He's saying dr- use your ads to drive search. I'll give you an example. We're gonna have a guest here coming up. <laughs> We're gonna have a guest here coming up in a couple weeks. His name is Brad Goss. Brad worked with me on the Brushy Bear campaign for for tongue. Oh, yeah, remember that? Right. All right, for tongue brush. You mean tongue brush? got a huge bump in search traffic because of Brushy Bear. Because people were watching this video and right. going and, and searching, searching brand. for the brand. Exactly. That's an example of using f- uh, social ads to drive search traffic. Right. Holy. But that doesn't have anything to do with rank brain. Okay. But this, if you're, that's just people. This if, is you, a, if you increase the search volume, then that will trigger the AI. This is a whole new search concept. Exactly. Okay. Uh, this exactly. is a concept of yeah. Increasing brand awareness and yes. general brand searches for your domain. And click-through rates. Keep in mind, click-through rates are a component of it. Okay. To increase your overall SEO for Correct. every page on your website. That's exactly right. Yeah. Holy flip. Exactly. This is very big deal. Now, currently, it's only the number... <laughs> this is very this big This is very deal. big deal. <laughs> this is... Uh, uh, currently, it's the, the number one... The number three social... The number three signal But we're guessing it's going to... At some point, it'll be the number up. one. And when it becomes the number one, that's what Larry Kim describes as Judgment Day... And that's why we have to be watching Rank Brain. We're going to call it Signal Creep. Yep, sounds good. Okay. All right, coming up. Yeah, this is cool and super relevant, uh, especially the the click-through rate. So a tool for uh, creating better headlines, uh, a tool for creating better email copy, and then uh, just something exciting in the world of blogging. I'm All pumped right. about. So the tools of the day coming up next. Here we are in studio. Rod, what are you working on? Public relations. If you're not getting media coverage for your business, you're missing a huge marketing avenue. The most basic and traditional form of public relations is the press release. It's effective. It's really effective. In fact, even the most successful digital and social media experts use public relations and press releases because it works. And we have an expert who's going to help you understand how to do it better. And I can tell you, I've used his advice. It works. He's the expert. Right. Make more money. For our listeners, we've created a product that will help you start creating effective press releases right away. There are four major components to doing this. There's the hook in which you have a hook or a news peg for your press release. There's the story in which dullness kills. You gotta write it well. And then there's two more that you have to know to make it work. Go get your copy of this free report just for listeners of Grow the Dream Show. You can get it at gtdshow.com slash PR. That's right, gtdshow.com slash PR. 
Do it. Do it now. All right, Grow the Dream Show, episode 62. And we are back for the tool of the day. Well, can I, can I do multiple? I guess we're going to have to call this of the, day. the tools of the day. Okay. We have this more than one tool. Exci- right. Exciting times. Uh, okay, so the first thing, share through. You guys share heard through. these guys? It's it's a it's a them no it, you know they're it's a them it's a company, <laughs> um, so I don't like this URL but uh, it's headlines dot sharethrough dot com and this is sharethrough t h r o u g h like it's all spelled out yes like the correct spelling of it okay so okay you know that's weird no itself. guarantees on the URL we've had some URL issues on the show but um, <laughs> I mean like dashes and stuff like on, okay so how engaging is your headline Rod yeah I need you to give me a headline. Okay, so let's. What's what's a recent headline you've used? Let's judge it. Let's see what score you get. Let's use one from uh, from the show recently, maybe. Okay, what you got? Um, hang on, I'm looking up. <laughs> I'm looking up our shows now. We didn't we didn't know we needed to have this uh, publicity masters disasters and more. So publicity colon masters disasters and more. Publicity masters disasters. Yeah, publicity colon masters disasters and more. I have a feeling because we don't say um, Kim or the guy. Larry Kim. Or Kanye West, they're not going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> Headline quality score 51 average. Out of what? 51 yeah. out, out of 100? 100, yeah. Okay, all right. So, so uh, we didn't use positive sentiment? What? Yeah, yeah. Limited use of positive sentiment. Conveying positive emotions can build positive associations with your brand, but can just as easily disinterest the reader. Reader. Uh, use more alert words. Mentioning a brand, that's what you were talking about. Like, yeah. The impression score says try mentioning a brand, yours or a brand you want to be associated with to increase brand lift. Okay, so let's do. Well, the do, full headline was like Grow the Dream Show episode, whatever it was. No, no, we'll do. Okay, so we'll do Facebook and then um, uh, Kim. So if we mention Con- Kanye West. Is that what you're saying? Or yeah, you do Kim. You do uh, Kim and I'll do Kanye West. We'll see uh, whose name uh, is better. Um, okay. Oh, wow. Okay, so if I say publicity masters and disasters, more from Facebook and Kanye West, which you know, I can obviously change that. But uh, headline quality score went up to 68. Ooh. So obviously this thing is like just using formula-based, and you could probably say something absolutely stupid that no human would think uh, click on, but this thing would... But say has a good score but i think maybe it gets you thinking about some of the right things so i used our, our head uh, from one of our blog posts from the show a competitor sabotages your facebook ranking now what score 84 Ooh, boom, boom, nicely boom. done nice nice okay so uh, that's a what cool was the tool. brand that had the publicity problems that we talked about the chipotle chipotle <laughs> chipotle <laughs> chipotle mm. you put them in there uh, yes i am i'm gonna see if that changes it so if we had said lessons from chipotle publicity masters disasters and more uh, oh, put well, in Donald Trump too. We only got up to thirty-six on the impression score, so the total was fifty-two. So it didn't help. Oh wow, that stinks. That okay, that All was right. a bad headline. Apparently. Second tool of the week, uh, okay. justgoodcopy.com, and uh, I don't even know who this, these guys are. Front put together this tool that basically collects emails from companies like Slack, Kissflow, Grabio. It's a swipe file. What? It's a swipe file. Is it called justgoodcopy.com? Yeah. Or I'm sorry, good email copy. Oh, I was going to say, because, all right, so is it just? No, no, it's just, uh, my bad. Uh, it is. Because I went to justgoodcopy.com. It is goodemailcopy.com. Goodemailcopy.com. Okay, yeah. that's a little different. So if, if you're needing inspiration for your next email and you can categorize it by thank you, welcome, nurture emails, product feedback. I mean, they got a whole bunch, like privacy policy and crap. But like, this so, like, is even the called boring. Just Good Copy. Okay, I get it now. So I'm at goodemailcopy.com looking at a tool called Just Good Copy. Oh. Yeah, you're okay. right. That is confusing. It's very confusing. But now I'm there. I'm we're in the right place. Now our listeners can get there too. So it's a swipe file. This is a swipe file. What, what's a swipe file? A swipe file is it's when you term. when you swipe copy from somebody and you say that's a great idea and you throw it into. I have a in in Gmail. I have a whole. Um, I just thought it was helpful curation, but you can make all. Well, yeah. Well, this different. is searchable, so that's kind of cool. But I can do this in, in Gmail too. I what I have is a. Um, I have a uh, label. You know, they don't have folders in Gmail. Oh, you, you I have a save label emails with good copy. Called Swipe, yeah. And then I, anything that I find that's really cool that I want to keep, I throw it in there. Yeah, I, I subscribe to this guy's like 
ridiculous email newsletter mm -hmm. called Frank Kern just so I could oh, yeah, see Frank. good idea Absolutely. ideas. Yeah. But they're like the most be like every time you're like you are just hawking crap, dude. Like it's the lowest common denominator that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It anyway, it's supposed to be inspiring, but every time I look at it, I just get sick on the inside. Oh, but this is good because it's got a lot of different brands in here. Slack, Dropbox, excuse me, Harry's. They have great copy. Okay. Squarespace, uh, HubSpot. You can expect good copy out of HubSpot. So, so that's cool. So you can search. So the idea is you type in a phrase and you go, okay, I'm going to write an email about blank. Yeah. You type in a search and then they're going to show you some, some examples of emails. There you go. You got another tool? I absolutely I squeeze it in. kind of do... Uh, this could have been news related, but Medium. Do you guys see that announcement uh, about? Yeah, they're going to create their own CMS now. Well, no, they've they've always had publications on Medium. They're just taking it. They're just taking it to the next level, making them more custom, and they're also opening up monetization. Yeah, they're allowing options you to sell it. content, now. and they're automatically integrating with Google AMP and Facebook Instant. So all the stuff we talk about on this show, and we like, sometimes we don't like the easy button, but in this case. I'm a geek. I don't like the easy button. Yeah. For some of you, this might be a easy button to consider yes. to get started. You can build it on your own domain. Yeah, so but you're you, still on somebody else's thing. You own just, the content. Uh, you can always export it, and you can also import your existing content. All right. So it's not customizable enough yet to have your own pop-ups and collect emails, which I know for marketers, we want that stuff. But it's interesting. I like the direction they're going. It'll be interesting to see where it goes. Uh, so this coming week will be fun. Uh, Facebook has their F8 conference, which means Instant Ooh. Articles is opening up to all of us this week. So a lot of other fun stuff that's uh, going on. It'll be uh, it'll be interesting to talk about next week when we yeah. get back together. Absolutely, it's a fun show. Uh, so hope you've enjoyed today. But we covered uh, we covered the gamut today. We got ha hacking mm -hmm. the press. We got SEO stuff. Uh, we had some news. It was a good show. I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, and if you have any questions about this stuff, I know we kind of uh, threw some stuff out there. Um, you can shoot us an email at uh, show at growthedream.com. That's right, show so at growthedream.com. You'd love also, to hear from you guys. If you're a Twitterer, you can also tweet us at GTD Show. There you go. And you can find my esteemed colleagues, Rod Thompson, on Twitter at Rod underscore Thompson. Remember, there's no E in Thompson. And uh, for Josh Muccio, it's. At Josh Mucho. 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 spelled Mucho. M U C T I. It is. You can say it the American way or you can say it the Italian way. Mucho. And as always, we hope to have you back next week. And if you enjoyed the show, be sure to leave us a review. That would be awesome. Thanks for listening to the Grow the Dream Show. We invite you to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Get connected to our growing community, add your comments, ask questions. And listen to the archives on the web at growthedream.com slash show.